This is what happens when I record videos live on stream. And this is why you should show up in streams, because I'm going to start recording YouTube videos like this, just on stream, and hope to not mess it up. Alright, we're at 26 past. How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another Elixir video. We're going to be going into a deck profile for a deck that I think is going to be making quite the splash as a rogue choice for BT10. Obviously everyone's getting ready for the infamous Shoutmon Cross 4 to start running havoc in their locals and people have been trying to tech around it. I think getting rid of the main source of everyone's problems, the ability to do material saves under tamers is going to be the way forward and what better deck to do that than a Jellymon jamming profile. So we're going to get into this one and I'm going to tell you what we're going to be changing for BT10 when that support finally drops October 17th in the West. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I rented the wire one, that's right. So yes, as I said before, this is a jamming profile. So we're going to be rocking the Demi Vmon from BT3. When attacking once per turn, if your Digimon has jamming, draw one. Going to be getting you that draw power that we need. There's not too much searching in this deck, but there is a whole lot of draw power. And we're going to start that off with the eggs. Just run four of them. Don't need the fifth one. You could run Upamon, but I feel like you're basically always going to have jamming. So you might as well go for it. And speaking of always having jamming. Our first rookie for Labramon. The Labramons are super useful in this deck because once per turn, when attacking, if you have jamming, gain one memory. It's a very, very solid option for if you're going to be building a level four stack and you just want to gain some memory back every time you attack. We aren't just running uh, weak jamming Digimon in this one, so there are plenty of opportunities to swing and actually have your stack survive. So gain the memory back every time you attack. Ideally, you're just building this up in the back if you're not already going for a Jellymon stack. Speaking of Jellymon, we are going to be running four of the BT9 Jellymon once per turn. If you play a blue Tamer draw one, we don't really get the uh, Tamer draw that often the way I play. It's obviously, obviously one of the best first turn openers because you can get that first turn opener and then promote it. Next turn, plop a tamer down, and you're gonna be getting that draw one. Sure, obviously you're costing four, but it does mean if you're getting any of the three cost tamers, you're at least getting some value out of that as well. The inheritance effect of bouncing a level three back to your hand does come up sometimes, but very rarely. More often than not, you're just using this because it does have Jellymon in its name. And speaking of Jellymons, the only other Jellymon available is the promo Jellymon, and we're running four of those as well. This one doesn't have a regular effect, but another great option to build up in the back. If you do have the Kiyoshiro Kigashimatari, uh, otherwise known as the just a canonical trainer for this uh, deck, draw one. Unconditional draw one, but it is once per turn. And once again, it is a rookie with jamming. So 12 rookies. I basically run 12 rookies in every profile that I do. So uh, that's not going to be changing anytime soon. Now we're going to get into the champion level Digimon and the Jellymons do continue. We're going to be running four Tesla Jellymon. High key, the best card in the deck. End of attack once per turn. You may trash two cards to unsuspend this Digimon. There's no clauses on how many cards you have to have. It is just have two cards in your hand. You can trash them and you restand. It's part of what allows you to apply massive amounts of pressure to this deck. Not necessarily an OTK, but can get you very, very close. You can do four checks depending on what your setup is. And of course, when you've got the Jellymon in the stack, then you can give it jamming later on. Okay, and then as far as jamming cards go, to start comboing with that... Um with that um, Labramon and also just start going with your Demi Vmon. Uh, the XVmon, yeah, it's 4k, so it will get swung over if you leave it on field, but its inheritance effect does give Imperial Dramon or free types uh, jamming to continue the chain. So four of those, and then we're gonna be running three Caesarmon. It was actually four Caesarmon to begin with, but I've actually cut it. Yeah, so uh, four Caesarmon. Um, was cut down to three. You could run four of it. I chose to switch it because we actually teched in a different tamer relatively last minute that goes well with the XB Mon being able to search it. 
So a 6k jamming doesn't have an inheritance, but the fact that it is 6k makes it a little bit bigger in security and does make it a little bit uh, more difficult to deal with if it stays on the field. One hybrid for game. I like Kendo Gurumon, so I run Kendo over um, anything else just because I like it more. But this could be any blue hybrid. Um, you never really want to be taking this over the level threes. It is going over a tamer for game. Uh, and you get plenty of opportunities to do it. You just have to be careful because a lot of your tamers do suspend in uh, this deck. So you're not guaranteed to have the um, unsuspended tamer. So just if you are looking to go for game, then you do have to kind of account for that. All right, so that's uh, one. All right, for our level fives, we are going to be going for a one of jamming Pyogabon. This one probably could get bumped up if you wanted to, to like two or three. I'm only running the one um, simply because I was also initially building this deck to be quite cost effective. A lot of the cards were cheap before adding in the promo cards that did bump up the price a little bit. But the jamming Pyogabon gives jamming, uh, has jamming naturally and if you digivolve over it with an Imperial Jamon, it can unsuspend itself once per turn when attacking, which is very nice. If you've got the XB Mon in Inheritance, then you're giving that jamming as well. So you've got jamming for days. So ideally you could go Labramon, uh, Labramon, Imperial, Pyle Jamon. Wait, Labramon, Labramon, XB Mon, Pyle Jamon, Imperial. And then you've got a stack that swings twice with jamming and um, is giving you the memory back as well. Um, very, very useful. It's actually why we're not running any of the EX1 v because we're not looking for the unsuspend cheese. It is just there uh, as an option to get jamming and get your memory back. Speaking of cards that have natural jamming, we're running two of the Aero v uh, When you have eight or more cards in your hand, this get card gains one security attack as is inheritance, which if you're drawing a lot, because uh, we do have draw power in this deck, then you can go for Security Attack Plus, very, very useful with uh, Imperial, and also the other level 6s that we have in here. Natural Jamming as well, 7k, decent body. Uh, so it really just depends on what the field looks like. If you've been trashing cards a lot because of Tesla, then you probably won't be able to hit this. But if you haven't really been able to have Tesla get going, then you should be able to start cleaning up later game with your level 6 stack. We've got one, uh, two loss level fives. The one of um, Dino B. This was mostly just because it was a cheap level five that I had uh, on hand. Uh, green and blue. The inheritance gives it two, uh, gives it one k for each of his colors, which can be a two k boost on an imperial. Uh, four cost evolution is very expensive, and then as you've probably noticed, there are no green sources. There used to be a one of. Uh, Stingmon, the EX1 Stingmon that had piercing just as like a tech option, but since nothing could digivolve over it, it really was a uh, you drop it on the field for the um, DNA, but it doesn't come up that often. The suspend often doesn't matter because you're not DNA, so the forecast is kind of expensive. This card is getting cut in BT10 for the Thetismon. Um, that comes in BT10. I'll throw up an image of it on screen, but it is. When did you evolving draw two? And um, if you have eight or more cards, then it can unsuspend by trashing two, I think. But it's, yeah, another Tesla Jellymon style Digimon that's at ultimate level. This card is going to be first on the chopping block to get rid of uh, for BT10. But it was an option I had. And the other one, another cheap cost, but this one also cheap to Digivolve. Instead of four cost, it's a two cost. Scorpio Mon, 8k vanilla Digimon, no inheritance. This was there just to get up the chain nice and quickly if you're building up in the back. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any inheritance that's actually useful. So not ideal. It is mostly just a turbo up there or to be an 8k in security that can catch people by surprise, especially if they're used to swinging into weaker Digimon. Say, like, I'm an armor rush player myself normally, so people are used to swinging kind of haphazardly into my security, not expecting much, but an 8k in security will keep people humble. Uh, we'll definitely make sure that they have to have jamming or they're really going to have to consider what they're swinging into. Decent Digimon option there for our final level 5, but it is mostly just there for turboing into our level 6s. As we've alluded to before, we are running Imperial Drummon Dragon Mode. Unfortunately, since there's no green target uh, in this deck anymore, it is just bringing out a level 4. Usually, you're going to be wanting to bring out the jamming target if you've got Caesarmon in the stack. 
Caesarmon is the go-to. It's a 6k body. Kind of difficult to beat over. Doesn't get deleted by a lot of the inherited deleted effects. Uh, usually people have to answer it with DP- minus or specifically targeting it. Uh, it has jamming, so it's obviously going to be doing nonsense uh, when it's actually able to do something. Um, and all in all, a pretty solid card. You can bring some of the Jellymons out if you need extra, like, to start going back up the chain. But my usual go-to target is Caesarmon when uh, Dragon Mode comes out. 12k in security, 4 cost evolution, tends to pass turn when you're doing it. Uh, but if you can use it to choke someone, then not too bad. Uh, fighter Mode to go on top of that. That's the other reason we're running Dragon Mode, is to bring the cost of Fighter Mode down, make it a 2 cost, bounce a 10k when Digivolving. Uh, and then, since you have the blue source, always uh, it will unsuspend, so you can get those two attacks. Um, you will, however, want to make sure that when you are attacking, uh, that you swing first with Dragon Mode to get the unsuspend off of the Pyildramon. Then did you evolve into Fighter Mode, swing, and just unsuspend swing. So that's how you start getting your, your really big checks in. Um, because otherwise they do go off at the same time and you will lose one of your attacks. If you do go over Dragon Mode, then you are getting the green source, which will help you suspend as well to help board clear. But for the most part, you're using this to really apply pressure as a more or less unconditional unsuspend whenever it is uh, attacking. The other card, though, you've probably seen this in Avalot's uh, deck profile. All Force Vigilmon, we're not running four, though. This one is mostly focused around the uh, Jellymon stuff, uh, which I'll go into a little bit after. But the All Force Vigilmon is your level six, your main boss monster. Three cost Digivolution, so it's not nearly as expensive to build up at the back. Whenever one of your blue tamers becomes suspended, unsuspend this Digimon. And when this Digimon becomes unsuspended, once we're entering your main phase, gain one memory can definitely be quite nice. It can come out rested, and then as long as you have a way of suspending the Tamer, then it can unsuspend itself and gain the memory back. Or if you're just getting it, then your first unsuspend is going to give you that extra memory. If you've got a way of giving it jamming, then Labramon in the stack would give it to you, but more often than not, you're getting your um, memory gain from the Ill Force itself because you need the Jellymon in order to... You need the Jellymon in Soul System to get jamming later. 11k does make it a little bit weak, which is why we do have another option for if you need to try and clear the board. But uh, we will get into that once we hit the Tamers. For now, we'll go into the option cards. Two offensive plugin. Crucial card, you always want to see at least one of these in your hand. I did try having it at three, but I did like having another option card in my hand just to try and do it. The plugins are obviously very, very strong. And we are getting new plugins in BT10, so if you do feel like you're constantly running out of DP, you could go for the new... Uh, I think it's offensive plugin O that gives you the extra 2k for the turn uh, to help you get over things. But the security attack is like you need to have two of them. You can't go under it. It's the main combo uh, for not just your all force, but for your Tesla Jellymon for super early pressure. Uh, having this down two costs. Tesla's now swinging for two. If you've got the jamming tamer, Tesla's swinging for two with jamming. Trash two cards is swung four times and then you can go from there. Amazing card, definitely. If I could run more of it, I would. But you won't always see your um, jamming tamer, or you may not have the Jellymon in your sources. So we run one high speed plugin D to give jamming, and also crucially, is unblockable. Blockers are becoming more and more common uh, for BT10, and also you may just play into opponents that have blockers. One of the guys I play into plays black which obviously has a lot of blockers in it. So being unblockable uh, for the turn, sometimes even if you already have jamming, very, very useful um, just to make sure that when you are swinging, you are swinging massive. So if you've got full memory and you've already got a Tesla on the field, sometimes it's worth just dropping plug in D, plug in A if you see blockers, and then you'll be doing uncontested four hits of damage in one turn. For searching, two blue memory boosts. Um, like I said, draw power is very, very good, but sometimes you're just not drawing into what you need and you just want to see those cards or you want to just start bottom decking stuff. This is your way of finding your uh, hybrid as well. And every piece in the deck, as far as Digimon are concerned, are blue. So you're always going to be like picking up one target as long as you're not hitting into too many options. We've got the one of Metal Storm as a form of removal for big Digimon. 
uh, bounces level six or lower, and then unsuspended Garurumon. But we don't actually have any Garurumons here outside of Kendo Garurumon, which is another reason to run Kendo in this as your hybrid as opposed to Lobo. If you do need to go into it earlier than expected, you could swing. Maybe, you know, they've you're playing into yellow, they've recovered on their last check. Metal Storm, if you had the memory, theoretically, would allow you to go into it again, or it keeps your hybrid safe. But for the most part, Metal Storm is just in here because I don't have a Kakaitis Breath. It was cheap. It came, I had one in BT9, so it's a form of uh, level six removal. This is getting cut for the BT9, uh, the BT10 version, that it reduces the cost by two if you have, if your opponent has two Digimon on the field, because we don't run X Antibody, the option in this, and we don't have uh, really any Garurumon stuff, so we're not getting the reduced cost. So really, we're only doing this because it's a slightly nerfed Kakaita's Breath. I don't have uh, the awful starter deck for V Victory Sword or whatever. So this is getting cut for the the seven cost blue bounce card that comes in BT10. And I think you should do the exact same because I feel like you're more likely to run into a wider board than have X Antibody in this deck. Speaking of removal, the reason to play this, if you like the Tesla Jellymon um, jamming stuff, that's fun. But the reason we are playing this, this is to deal with BT10. Startling Thunder, we're running three, could actually go up to like four or anything else like that. Startling Thunder. Let's get its effect. Startling Thunder. Return one of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon to the owner's hand. Then if you have a Digimon with Jellymon in its name or Jellymon in its Digivolution cards, return one of your opponent's tamers to its owner's hand. This can bounce any tamer in the game regardless of its cost. Obviously it's a four cost option, so if you're playing it on a Memory Tamer, the Memory Tamer can just come back out. But if you're using it whilst you're at three, you're choking them to one and they're forced to either play the turn on one memory or pass the turn back to you by playing their Memory Tamer back, which effectively refunds it. If you hit it in security and it's enough further, far enough in the game that they actually have Tamers on the board, amazing card, amazing card to hit. I have had turns where I've drawn into two of these. I've Startling Thundered to bounce back the tamer i pushed out my stack and gotten a little bit more board presence obviously if they've gone level fours it's very very strong if they manage to go tamer and like a level three stack or a four stack and they pushed it out onto the field um then bouncing that back and then effectively killing off the egg and the level three as well as bouncing a tamer they can't really build up too much especially if they've just promoted it that turn they have to put that memory tamer back you get one you wait for them to push out their stack again, bounce it straight back. I've won games off of just doing two Startling Thunders back to back because it just, if you've, if they've had to search for their level four or level three pieces and they've had their level threes and eggs trashed like two turns in a row or in relatively quick succession, that can make it really difficult for people to get back out of raising area. And of course, you're also wasting their time by putting the memory tamer back in their hand. If it has on play effects, then, you know, it's something to weigh up, like playing it into a Davis probably isn't as great, but for cards that don't search the deck, an amazing way of uh, causing trouble. And of course, if you hit it in security, it can completely break a game for someone just off the fact of it bouncing a tamer. And of course, when you're bouncing something, any sources underneath it get trashed. And that's why we're using it to get rid of the Mikey. He's going to be, or Taiki, he's going to be your main target for bouncing at all times. You are never not wanting to bounce Mikey if you see him uh, show up on the field. So yeah, three Startling Thunders. Was running four, but I needed removal for if they ever got above level four, and this deck really doesn't have the staying power to fight uh, if you get past it. So we did run the one Metal Storm, which will change into any other blue removal option. That is our option cards. Now finally, we have our Tamers. Three Kyoshiro. He is a Kuroshio in name, so that means that the promo Jellymon is going to give you the draw. But also, he's your memory setter for this. Doesn't do any searching, but if you've got a Jellymon in name or a level 5 or higher, then you can tap it if you've got 7 off you uh, to draw 1. If you're using Tesla Jellymon to make sure your hand is constantly cut down, then he's always going to be live as long as you're swinging with um, a level 5 or higher. Often you're using it for the level 5 or higher, which really means you're using it for all force. Um, or if you do have the jamming cards, then you might as well get the extra stuff. 
if you do have that and you have the other Jellymon, the non-promo one, then you can bounce level three if it's relevant because you are adding a card to your hand. But really, we're running three of these because they are the named Tamer and also is a memory setter. The draw power is nice, but doesn't come up too often, but it is a Tamer that can suspend itself in order to unsuspend your all four speed drum on. or since it's less common since it does have the level five or higher claws be a jelly mon which you really don't want to be um swinging because that actually can't get jamming thanks to it uh the other tamer being jelly mon in sources um you are using this for the level five or to keep it for your hybrid this one's getting suspended every turn though the kyoshiro uh promo this one if you have a jelly mon in a in its Digivolution cards, then you can tap this to give it a Digimon jamming. Um, obviously, it makes every card in the deck have jamming, which means Labramon uh, would proc, but unfortunately, you're not running Labramon at the same time as running Jellymon. Um, it is making sure that any of your level sixes, which obviously don't have jamming naturally, have jamming. It means that anything that you do can swing and cause problems. Even if a card has jamming, you can still tap it to gain jamming, which will then unsuspend your all force. Very, very useful card. Uh, and is honestly the linchpin of the deck. I tried testing four, but it just wasn't working. I felt like three and three was the ideal split, especially because we've got room for two more tamers in this deck, uh, just in case you need um, to do a little bit of board control because you can't always just swing for the fences. You do need to play the board. And in order to do that, we do have one Rina Shinomiya. Uh, I actually got this um, recommendation from Amigo when we were comparing our Jellymon decks, because we happened to be building Jellymon at the same time, he was more focused on the All Force side of things, uh, whereas mine kind of just uses All Force because I saw it as a cool option. Uh, this allows you to search any card with V in its name in your top three as an on, uh, on play. So that lets you search your XV Mons, it lets you find your All Force Speedramons. And that is why we're running four XV Mons instead of the four Caesar Mons, because this card can actually search the XVs, which just means that you have the ability to get a level four in hand if needed. And if you don't have your level six, then she might help with that. In addition to that, you can suspend this statement to give plus 1000 DP to any Digimon, which of course is a suspend uh, that can help all force not only get a little bit bigger, but also restand. If it already has jamming, then you're going to go jamming first in order to make sure it survives that first check guaranteed. And then after that, you want to go uh, for the arena as your next option to just get slightly bigger and if you're swinging to improve its attack power then um, you can start swinging over 11ks without having to worry about trading. We got one arena and our last tamer of the deck. We saw this in my armor rush profile but we're also running it here. Mimi and Joe kind of just punishes you for playing the game. If they got a suspended Digimon, gain one memory. If you have a suspended Digimon, gain one memory at the start of your turn. So if you've left any, if they've swung at anything, then you're gaining memory off of it. If you've gone hell for leather and swung at stuff, you're gaining memory at the beginning of your turn. And also, if one of your blue or green Digimon deletes a Digimon in battle and survives, you may suspend this Tamer to draw one. You don't have any blockers to draw the hit and proc this automatically, but you can uh, suspend that Tamer if you swung at um, swung at a body in order to tap it, draw one, and most importantly, if the blue tamer getting suspended, so all force once again will come alive. So there's plenty of ways to do it. Uh, there's plenty of ways to uh, play this deck, but I like to play it a little bit more control and then kind of just keep ample pressure on. If they start going wide with uh, lower levels, then Startling Thunder is the MVP. Tesla, if you can get it to you can get one turn where it's uh, at two checks, brilliant. If it's not two checks, then you... S well, if it's not two checks per swing, then you're still hitting for four. And it's a pretty decent way of making sure that your memory tamer is online. But all in all, is a very, very fun deck. I think it should do pretty well in the cross four matchup. Just bouncing, um, bouncing the tamers back. And also, I believe Darulamon and Ballistamon are level four. So they also get popped by Startling Thunder. Uh, you can mess around with the ratios, but this was kind of the finished version that I'm happy with. Like I said before, two of the level fives I would probably cut for Thetismon when BT10 hits. Uh, and I'll also be changing out the Metal Storm for the like for like um, bounce option that's in BT10. But I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the profile. I've changed my cameras around so it's easier to read the cards and less me. Um, if you do want me to ever revisit the 
any of my other deck profiles that have come out uh, with this changed camera layout, do let me know. And uh, if you have any other suggestions for what I could change going in for BT10, or if this deck has been as successful in your locals playing as a rogue format into the meta staples of BT10, make sure to let me down, uh, know down in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time.